Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So delighted to be back in the company of our good friend, Gareth Lefleski, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. How can we improve our proximity with those scoring clubs? Mm -hmm. In one of the most challenging parts of the game, mm -hmm. which is the in-between yardages where we don't have a full club. Yeah. It's easy when we've got 120 yards and we can stick a pitching wedge on it or a gap wedge on it and that's yeah. a comfortable place. But mm -hmm. what do you do when you've got 52 yards or 71 or whatever that is? People get a bit lost and struggle with that. Definitely. They probably feel like they could hit it closer from 150 than they could from 50. Definitely. How many times have you been with someone that goes, oh, I'm going to lay up. I don't want to have 65 yards yep. and I'm terrified of it. And you go, yeah, you're not wrong. Lay up to 105 if that's how far you hit your sandwich. You probably would have a better proximity. Definitely. But if you learn the shots properly, Gareth, you'd probably agree the stats would show you that you will eventually become a much you know, better proximity player if you can learn to hit those yardages. Closer. You got to get closer. Yeah. The closer, closer you can get to the target, the closer your next shot is going to be. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty simple. Now, if you're always laying up to 100, you know, best on tour, even a good shot is going to be 20, 25 feet. That's yeah. right. And then what are you into? You're into making that maybe on a good day, two out of 10 times. Yeah, yeah. and that's the best players in the world. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. is really laying up to 100 yards going to give you the opportunity to make birdie? Yeah. Probably not. Good point. And we're going to do some stuff. This is one video of many that we've got coming up. I mean, we've just spent, you know, an hour or so talking about, you know, different concepts and, and, and uh different ways to reframe the mm. learning process and, and something that you guys can ultimately learn from what the best players in the world do to get better that, that the average golfer does not do. Uh, and, and we're going to start with this wedge matrix uh, yeah. topic. So mm. run us through what, what is a wedge matrix, Gareth, and, and how can it be applied? Well, basically what we're doing is we're taking one club and we're breaking it down into three swings. So we've mm. got, if you just want to stand sure. up there. So we've got a waist high swing. So we'll take it back to waist high for me. And then we've got a three quarter swing. And then we've got a full swing. So with those three different swings, and obviously just finishing about the same distance on the way through. Aim for the same fall. Yeah. yeah. So with those three different swings, we'll get three different yardages. Right. So most people carry three to four wedges in their bag. Yeah. So now what we have is we have four wedges, three swings, 12 different yardages. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this here, we're going to have something that's like, in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, okay. in the 70s, in the 80s. Now this is important because as you start to build this out and you start to look at your numbers, you don't want to be doubling up too much. Right. So that might be a reason you're going like, yeah, maybe I don't need 60. Maybe right. 50, it's a way better uh. club for me because then the gapping as mm -hmm. you go through your matrix actually makes a Improves. lot more sense. Let's start, what, what wedge do you have there, Matty? This is my 60. Let's, let's start kind of baseline and some, some yeah. you know, of, of our of our four wedges, of our three swings, let's let's start to establish your baselines and kind of build out your matrix and, and let's see what, what you come up with. Nice there. Yeah, I think, I think 80 will be nice. Nice contact there. Very good. Nice. Excellent. That looked nice.
nicely then. Mm -hmm. That felt nice. Yeah, that, that's the number, I think, 55. Okay. Nice. Great stuff. I mean, you know, we've, we've you know, utilised the, the Foresight software here. So we've got the uh, with the half swing set and we've got a f uh, 50 degree wedge, 54 and 60, which is yours, Matty. Yeah. We could have done with the pitching wedge as well and some people could, but we thought we'll focus on the three wedges for now. Yeah, if someone wanted to add a, you know, a fourth one, they'd end up with 12 in their matrix, yeah. but this one will be for nine. Yeah. So we've got out of the 60, obviously the shortest one gave you a nice 30 yard carry. Uh, the 54, the sandwich, gave you 37, and then the 50 gave you 55. So obviously some different launch, uh, some different windows of, of trajectory and stuff like that as well. Definitely. Different yeah. options. I think um, what we were just saying off mm -hmm. camera, the 54 um, half shot is one I haven't practiced really much at all. Mm -hmm. And I think by the time I got to the 50, I was a bit more comfortable. So I think if I practiced this, yep. I would probably see that 54 go to maybe 41, 42 yards. Agreed. And yep. I think this would really be nicely balanced at that point. Yeah, and absolutely. And the other thing is, is that sometimes even just going down that wedge gives you that lower flight window, gets you back to that back pin. Yes. So landing on the middle of the green and just letting it release back there. It's still spinning good, you know, it's yeah. still spinning like that. But obviously the launch angle as it coming in is going to make sure that it releases back up the hill. Gotcha, with you. the lower loft, it goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some of the best pictures of recent memory, it's exactly how you can picture them rolling towards the hole like a putt, you know, yeah. looked on, yeah. phenomenal at that one. You know, yeah. it has enough spin on it to control the distance, but the final phase of it is is rolling at the hole very, very And controlled. you hold more shots that way, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And we try to make it, you know, we have so much fun spinning it and doing yeah. all of this stuff. We talk so much about it, but, you know, putting it into a practical standpoint yeah. probably doesn't make that much sense. Yeah. As long as we have mm -hmm. enough spin, yeah. you know, that's all we're looking for. So. Go into the, uh, the three quarter swings with all three. So that, that gave us 51, 67, and, and 87. So again, pretty, I would say they're pretty well spaced out. Yep. Um, again, maybe that 50, my, and I should say mine is in fact a 55. True enough. It does say 54 yeah, on the yeah. sole. So mm -hmm. maybe that's an opportunity where I might want to strengthen that to actually mm -hmm. make it 54. Yep. Or maybe my technique was just a little off in this sequence, but I would say Again, there's three pretty well spaced out yards, is there? And that's the thing, as long as they're gapped, you yeah. know, as long mm -hmm. as there's, you're not doubling up too much on the numbers, Yes. you can turn around and say, yeah, I, I want to make 67 yards my go-to club. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, like that's, you know, see, so you don't really need the incremental differences. What you're looking for is just a separate number. Gotcha. And so far we have that. We have yeah, no, I think, I think they're fantastic there. Full swing at the end gave us 80, 97, 111. Nice. Good spacing there. Yeah, yeah. That was a very, very good spacing. And right? one thing I think I reminded myself with was, you know, your top end of a wedge, especially, you know, 50 degrees sand wedge and a lob wedge, what a full swing is, mm -hmm. that's not a full, full swing. That's I can, right. I can obviously hit those clubs further, mm -hmm. but can I control my distance that yeah. well with a harder swing? I think the answer is no. Like, I, there's, I forget who said it, like, I'd love to play the guy who goes 100% of his wedges mm -hmm. for money. It's like a Ben Hogan quote yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. And I can see why, because mm -hmm. I'm not great with my wedges, but at that tempo, I could control the, like, you can see the deviations are pretty Fantastic. tight. So it doesn't mean you can't ever go out of gap wedge once in a while, but I yep. like the idea of these being kind of the set yardages mm -hmm. for this distance. The interesting thing is if we went now and we actually said, hey, I want you to hit a couple of numbers and we threw out just some random yeah. numbers yeah you would be able to go and look at your matrix and actually quantify where what club you need to hit what length of swing you need to hit yes and now you're going to be in that area where you're actually going to be able to 
get a decent proximity. Yeah, you have the confidence for it. It kind mm -hmm. of feels like having a caddy at that mm -hmm. point. You know, like, oh, I've got 70 yards. Normally you'd just be thinking, oh, what am I gonna do with this? You kind of check your reference sheet. Okay, a mid-height shot that goes 70 yards is gonna be my 55 yeah. or three-quarter swing. Easy decision. No, I think that's brilliant. And you have nine very different yardages. You actually Good. don't really, I mean, the only one that came close to somewhat crossover was the, uh, three-quarter swing lob wedge and the half swing gap wedge 51 and 55 but through two different windows I mean you can Good see point. very consistently you know you launched 55 and 60 quite similar mm. uh, the launch angles all the way through you know 55 and 60 31 were both very different with gap wedge yes. um, you know when we went to half swing 33, 32, and then drops to 29. Like the, the gap wedge was point. always through a different window. So mm. those are your options, Gareth. You said it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Front pin, mid pin, back pin. How do you? How are you going to access those? Uh, you know, I think that just gives you more options. Yeah, having a lower flighted shot that maybe flies a similar distance. Yep. It's going to roll out a little bit more, and it's just a different um, trajectory in your arsenal yeah. that you didn't have before. Now it is an aha moment when you get out here and you go and do this here, and people see this is actually really, really easy yeah, to do. Yeah. And like you can hit those numbers more often. It, people, people have been like, I can't believe I hadn't, like pros going, hmm. I, have, I can't believe I didn't do this before. Yeah, like yeah. This, is, this is too easy, yeah. Yeah. you know? And then you do it, then you actually go and practice it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be dynamite. True. And yeah. the thing is as well, the, the challenge really then becomes, cause you've got your matrix, the challenge becomes consistency of contact. Yeah. That's actually the biggest challenge in the whole thing is, are you making the consistency of contact? Because yeah. everything else is, is very structured. You know, we've got a certain club, we've got a certain length of swing, and, and we have a tempo that we're working off of. Yes. Uh, and then it's really just how good's my contact. Yeah, absolutely. You practice a variety of lies, and then yeah. you kind of get dialed in from fairway or rough for kind of bare mm -hmm. lies, and that's, that's how it goes. And like I mentioned earlier, I love putting, putting the marks on the yeah, club. Yeah, a little reminder yeah, there with pie. the stickers. So it just makes it easy, because then you get out, and if mm. you, you go out for a week, and you'll forget that you're doing it. I know. <laughs> and you'll just get into your old habits yeah, of doing it. And you, you know, so this just I gives you the reminder. But also, when you're going to practice, you can go and you can actually kneel down those yardages. Mm -hmm. A lot of the players I have, we just buy the wee cheap cones mm -hmm. and you walk them out mm -hmm. to the range, go to the corner side of the range or an area where you can chip, walk them out to those distances and just hit shots. Yeah. See if you can do that. Okay, um, part of this improvement series, guys, how we can extract more out of your games coming into, whether you're, you're in you know, the winter sun or whether you've got off season and you're really working towards next year, this is great value for, for people who maybe are thinking about improving in a different way. Um, you know, obviously people want to work in their swing, technically improve, but there's, there's lots of other untapped, there's lots of other stones to, uh, to uncover when it comes to that. And, and this is, this is one of the most important, most valuable ones. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Tons yeah. of uh, improvement, I think, to your, your handicap and your strokes per round through this type of practice. Perfect. Okay. Stay tuned for more guys. We've got a little mini series going on here. We will see you again soon.